Hey, Dr. McClum, Rashek of Merogenomics once again. I'm going to make back-to-back -back videos and I wanted to actually make an explosive video showing some of the crazy new information that I saw coming out with regards to Omicron. But I wanted to show you walk across a brand new bridge that we have in Edmonton and show you some spectacular artwork that's on top of that bridge. So this is something going to be a little bit different. So let's get started. So as we all know omicron came out and it was a crazy surprise as to where did this variant come out with so many different spike mutations so many mutations period and a paper came out recently this is still peer review not peer reviewed so it's a preprint meaning no one actually really analyzed that information yet uh, so take that in mind so this is not for sure certain or anything like this this is only a speculation it's a first information of its kind and basically what this what these authors were positing or stating is that Omicron came from an animal and that might help to explain why it's so mysterious so one of the unsolved mysteries of this virus Omicron variant is the fact that we don't have any evolutionary family tree preceding it it literally just showed up out of nowhere it's and if you to look at if you were to look at it at its oldest ancestor if you will within the course of the pandemic the closest ancestor we have of it is something that happened to show up in the spring of 2020 there's nothing in between and recall that I was talking about in the previous video that we are tracking the evolution of the virus in an amazing detail because we are sequencing the genomes of the virus all over the world all the time so we have incredible evolutionary family tree available for all variants and omicron is literally showing up out of nowhere so there's been some prevailing theories trying to explain that and you might have heard some of this so theory number one is that basically the omicron does have other ancestors in between we just happened not to capture it so we don't know anything about it so it was too infrequent in order to be able to capture it and theory number two and this is what you might have heard is that there might have been immunocompromised patient that allowed the variant to exist in that individual for such a long time that basically it led to the evolution and development of Omicron variant in that particular individual. We've actually seen this before in this pandemic. In fact, this pandemic is the first time in history when we were able to demonstrate that demonstrate that a single individual can be infected by one type of virus and be sick with the virus for so long that they can actually produce a brand new variant and we know this because we were able to show that through sequencing of the genome of the virus because some immunocompromised patients can be sick for extremely long time even like up to a year or longer so that means they eventually will lead to completely new strain so before that this was only theoretical it was only during this pandemic that we've been we were able to show this that this theory can truly take place place in a indiv single individual where a single individual can act like a petri dish if you will to create a new variant so that was another theory as to why we've seen this long evolutionary distance between Omicron showing up out of nowhere and the last ancestor from well over a year ago so and the final theory that also could explain this is that you could see this if the variant came out of different species so if that variant showed up from a different animal source and that that would show basically that over a year ago the closest ancestor to current omicron entered an animal species and now almost a year and a half later it has reinserted itself into the animal species which is humans new animal species which is back to humans so then the question was what could it be and these authors wanted to investigate this and they actually had a history of investigating this and how they chose to investigate it is mind-boggling it was very very clever trick and that's what I wanted to tell you about in this video so what they first did is basically what they first they, they looked at it how did the mutations between the last known ancestor in a human 
evolutionary tree of this virus, how many mutations were between that last ancestor from a year and a half ago and the current Omicron. And they appeared, there were about 45 different mutations between the last ancestors in humans and Omicron. And that, that super long branch, they even named it <laughs> uh, and they, that long branch connecting the last ancestor and the current Omicron when it showed up out of nowhere, they named it branch O as in like, oh, where did it come from? <laughs> so, uh, and they studied what were those 45 mutations and I didn't even realize this, but remember when you have your genetic material or your genetic material, whether it's a virus or our own genetic material, it's made up of four chemical bases. That's what makes up the DNA code or RNA code in viruses, in some of the viruses. and any of these four chemical bases within that code could be substituted by accident for any other three. So you have a specific pattern of mutations that you can create and, the, and each species apparently has its own pattern of mutations because each species creates a different microenvironment how things are mutating within us. So humans, for example, have a specific pattern because we have abundant amount of reactive oxygen species which play normal biological role but if you have too much of it you can lead to mutations within DNA that's what reactive oxygen species can do and as a consequence we of that we create a very specific pattern of mutations and each animal species creates its own specific pattern and they investigated the pattern of mutations between the very last known human ancestor and the current Omicron over a year and a half later and the pattern of mutations that they were able to discover corresponded to a specific animal. Now which animal that is is actually mind-boggling it's not a good news for us potentially but again this is only process of discovery so nothing to panic about but it clearly suggests that perhaps we should be reinvestigating this in greater detail because it could be of important consequence because the animal that they discovered was it was in mice. Furthermore, the mutations that showed up between those ancestors, the last ancestor in humans and the Omicron, the mutational rate was much, much faster than what would be normally expected inside humans, which means there was a different selective pressure or evolutionary pressure on that particular particular variant to evolve into Omicron, which that pressure would have been different than it would be expected if it was evolving inside humans. That once again also pointed to the authors that it most likely was in a, in a different animal. And then when they assessed all the different patterns of how viruses mutate in different animals that they were able to, to study this for, and they studied at least different 15 animals, it pointed to possibly that mice are being involved. Now why is this potentially bad for us? Well, because we never want to be able to for the SARS-CoV-2 to be crossing between different species because it makes it more difficult to manage, number one. And number two, mice or rodents, they're actually not a rare species for humans to come in contact with. There's obviously two different paths of how we could be potentially interacting with, with uh, such species. Number one is obviously any major cities will have have rodents in it. So there is one potential avenue of exposure. But another very big one is the fact that we that mice is the most studied animal model in sciences. It's one of the most important animals that we do all our studies on and literally millions upon millions of mice are being subjected to experiments every single year. And a very large portion of that is currently being used for investigation of uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So, so many, many different scientists have exposure to mice that are infected with SARS-CoV-2. So this is definitely not what we want to be figuring out or finding out is that um, potentially mice could be a species of animal that could allow a virus to be jumping from us to them and vice versa because with Omicron, if that's the case, we might have got super lucky because it's very mild. It could have been much, much worse variant. 
and basically they might explain how why Omicron is showing so much variation in comparison to all of the different other variants uh, and that we've seen so far in humans. So it's because of this unusual, unusual pattern. Now what they've, they confirmed this further and what they did is they they then analyze the history of coronaviruses in mice that have been studied and indeed the type of mutations that preceded Omicron and that and that were have not seen in the last human ancestor so all these new mutations that are showing up in omicron they happen to be statistically more significant to be observed in vi sars cov2 viruses that evolved in mice as opposed to other species including humans that do can they do show up in humans sometimes too but very rarely much more frequently in mice and then finally what they did is computational modeling once again when they, t they took the computational model of a mouse ACE2 receptor and they showed that the Omicron had a better binding to it than you would expect from the ancestral one that we have last record of. So there's further corroborating evidence suggesting that indeed Omicron very well might have jumped into humans from mice and that brings me to the last final point which is to basically exemplify how easy it is to potentially have an accident in a laboratory if a person could be accidentally infected by a mouse and bring it to the population that's in fact what has happened not that long ago there was a scare in taiwan where a worker was bitten by a mouse and they had to investigate whether that might have been a contributing factor towards uh, any outbreak and they deemed uh, at that in that particular instance that nothing had happened but it's but if we can cross mice to human species that's very important because it potentially means we might have to bring completely new stringent measures in terms of how careful we have to be when we're doing experiments on mice if omicron indeed came from another animal species we might have got very very lucky because it appears to be more designed to escape our neutralizing antibodies while at the same time still binds the re human receptor better than prior known variants it seems in in humans so we are very very lucky that the omicron at least is not causing um, increased morbidity and mortality as we have seen with some of the other human variants big big news massive massive surprise it definitely needs confirmation so definitely we'll be looking forward to see more data to see if this is if this discovery is is true or not that's it for now um it just uh wanted to mention we most likely will have another covid 19 q a event so uh, check it out the link for that will be in the description below and uh if you like this video, if you like this type of information, you know how it works. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, spread the love. And uh, see you next time with some more explosive news. Take care, everyone.